Generally, the questions asked from data sufficiency are very easy to solve. But sometimes there may be a twist in the question or the given question may be tricky enough that we get a wrong answer. So though the questions of data sufficiency are easy, we have to pay proper attention to the given question and the statements while solving questions from data sufficiency. Let us have a look at one such example. The question here is what is the two digit number? What is the two digit number? So we have to find out the two digit number. Let's say the two digit number is AB. So AB has to be determined. What is the number AB has to be determined. Now we know that the two digit number can be obtained only when we know both the digits. The units digit B and the tens digit A. So if you are able to find out what is A and B then we will be able to answer this question. Statement 1 says the sum of the two digits is 8. The ratio of the two digits is 1 is to 3. Statement 2 says the product of the two digits is 12 and their quotient is 3. So let's see which of these statements or if both the statements together can give us the answer or no. Now as per statement number 1 we know that sum of the two digits is 8. That means a plus b is equal to 8. So statement 1 says the sum of the two digits a plus b is equal to 8. And we know that the ratio of the two digits is 1 is to 3. That means a is to b is equal to 1 is to 3. a is to b equals to 1 is to 3. You know that a is to b is nothing but a by b. a by b equals to 1 by 3. And statement 2, the product of the two digits is 12. So from statement 2, product of the two digits, that is nothing but a into b is equal to 12. And their quotient is 3. What does it mean by quotient? That is the division. When we divide the digits, the answer will be 3. So we can say a by b is equal to 3. So these are the two statements given and we are supposed to find out what is the two digit number. As I've already mentioned, to find out the two digit number, we should know what is the digit a and what is the digit b. That means here we have two variables a and b. And to solve for two variables, minimum two equations are required. Now if you look at statement 1, a plus b equals to 8 is one equation. a is to b equals to 1 is to 3 or a by b equals to 1 by 3 is the other equation. So here we have two equations a plus b equals to 8 and a by b equals to 1 by 3. Two equations and two variables a and b. We can solve them and find out what is a and what is b. So we can say that answer can be obtained from statement 1. Similarly if you look at statement 2 a into b equals to 12 is the first equation a by b equals to 3 is the second equation. So here again we have two equations and the two variables a and b. Two equations two variables as we know can be solved. So here also we can find out what is a, what is b and then we can find out the two digit number. So here we say that statement 1 alone can give the answer and statement 2 alone as well can give the answer. So our answer has to be option 3 that is either statement 1 or statement 2 alone is sufficient to answer the question. But let me tell you friends that is the wrong answer. This is what generally students do when this question is given. They feel that statement 1 has got two equations, two variables we can solve. And statement 2 as well has got two equations, two variables can be solved. So we can find out the two digit number from statement 1 as well as from statement 2. But that is the wrong conclusion as I've already mentioned. Here answer cannot be obtained from the statements alone. So let us see what is the twist in the given question. If you look at statement 1, it says the sum of the two digits is 8. So we have mentioned a plus b is equal to 8. The remaining part of statement 1 says the ratio of the two digits is 1 is to 3. Now this is the part where we get trapped. The statement simply says ratio of the two digits is 1 is to 3. But no way it has been mentioned that this ratio is a is to b or b is to a. And that is what is the mistake committed. We have simply taken a is to b equals to 1 is 3. But let me tell you friends, it can be b is to a also. b is to a equals to 1 is 3. Why? Because from the statement, we only know that ratio is 1 is 3. But is it a is to b? That means tenths place is to units place or units to place or units place is to tenths place has not been mentioned. That means there are two possible answers. One is a plus b equals to 8 with a is to b equals to 1 is 3 can be solved. So we get one answer. The other one is a plus b equals to 8 and b is to a equals to 1 is 3. We get the other answer. So we are not able to find out a unique answer from statement 1. We get two different answers. With respect to the first part of the statement that is a plus b equals to 8 we don't have any problem. Why? Because a plus b equals to 8 is as good as b plus a is equal to 8. But the problem is in the second part that is the ratio. So we can say that statement 1 alone is not sufficient to answer the question as we are getting two different answers or I can say we will be getting two different answers if we solve them. And we need not solve these equations to find out the answer. Why? Because it is only to check the sufficiency of the data. 
Now let's see what is the problem with statement 2. In statement 2 again, we know that the product of the two digits is 12. So we have taken a into b equals to 12. Or it can be b into a equals to 12. That doesn't make a difference. But the point which makes a difference here is the second part. That is their quotient is 3. Quotient as I have mentioned you is the result of the division. That is a by b equals to 3 is what we have taken. But remember it can also be b by a equals to 3. Why? Because it simply says their quotient is 3. But is it a by b equals to 3 or b by a equals to 3 has not been mentioned. That means again here we get two possible answers. One answer can be obtained with a into b equals to 12 and a by b equals to 3 and the other answer can be obtained with a into b equals to 12 and b by a equals to 3. That is simply two equations, two variables can be solved. But we are not able to find out a unique answer from statement 2 as well. We get two different answers. So we can say even statement 2 alone is not sufficient. Since the individual statements have failed to answer the question, we now have to go for combination of these two statements. So let's see what happens when we combine both the statements together. Here, even if we try to combine both the statements, there still remains an ambiguity in the second part of each of the statements. That is, even by combining the statements, we are not able to decide is it exactly a by b equals to 1 by 3 or b by a equals to 1 by 3 or a by b equals to 3 or b by a equals to 3. That means even the combination cannot give us the answer for this question. And if we try to use these two in statements here, that is a plus b equals to 8 and a into b equals to 12, still we will not be able to get the answer. Why? Because here to find out the answer we have to form an equation in terms of a minus b. That is nothing but we can say a minus b whole squared is equal to a plus b whole squared minus 4ab. Why? Because this is a square plus b square plus 2ab minus 4ab will give you a square plus b square minus 2ab. That is nothing but a minus b whole square. So we can say a minus b whole square. a plus b whole square is 8 square minus 4 into a into b is 12. So we get 64 minus 4 into 12 is 48. 64 minus 48 is equal to 16. So we are able to say a minus b whole square is equal to 16. Now from this a minus b will be equal to plus or minus 4. That means even if we try to find out what is a minus b by using the first part of each of the statements we are getting two possibilities again. a minus b equals to plus 4 or a minus b equals to minus 4. Now, if we try to solve this equation with a plus b equal to 8, we will get two different answers. Why? Because one set of equations is a plus b equal to 8, a minus b equal to 4. And the other set of equations here is a plus b equals to 8 and b minus a equals to 4 or a minus b equals to minus 4. So again, there will be two possible answers. That means very clearly, the combination also cannot give us a unique answer for the given question. So that is the reason here the answer has to be option number 4. That means even both the statements together, both 1 and, 10, 1 and 2 together are not sufficient to answer the question. That is nothing but option 4. So this is how some questions though they appear to be easy, there is a twist involved and we get a wrong answer. So we have to be careful while solving the questions from data sufficiency. And make sure that you proceed with the solution only when the proper data is given to you. Otherwise, such kind of ambiguities have to be taken care of and do not take anything for granted. That means here, just because ratio is given as 1 is 3, we cannot decide that a is to b equals to 1 is 3. Remember, both the possibilities are there. And likewise, if the quotient is 3, doesn't mean that a by b equals to 3. It can be b by a equals to 3 as well. So do not take anything for granted when it comes to data sufficiency. Only when the proper information is given, you decide and come to a conclusion.